Roadkill will have to come in, though. Ew, yeah. It's gonna make the whole house smell. Oh, God. You're gonna have to, like, Febreze fucking everything. Welcome back to To The Moon. Last time we played, we, like, hopped out of the memories because we didn't go to the moon like we expected to. And we got exhausted, we hopped out of it, and we're kind of like, what now? What do? So, I feel like the solution is to figure out what's going on with the childhood stuff, but that's just me. Having said that, I don't know if this is, like, a good time to explore the house more. There were things in the basement that we weren't able to explore. The fact that there is a conversation here that we can kind of eavesdrop on tells me that, yes, there is added value to exploring here. Tommy, but Ma, <laughs> I don't want to go to school. Oh, honey. <laughs> Lily, it, it's Sunday, dear? Shh, let them sleep. I had the impression before that um, like, the caretaker and her kiddos, I think they've been living here for, like, two years since River passed away? Like, the, I had the impression that they were, like, I mean, they're still living here, but, like, living here. That was my impression. This is, like, I don't know. Like, if they're sleeping on a couch, it's not the same impression as, like, you guys all have your own rooms. It's a different feeling to it, I guess. It's not what I expected. Um, there's an hourglass and a hand over here with the books. I'm still being quiet. Dusk light. The tail of girl fell in love with a zombie who emitted the smell of daisies when showered with gentle sunlight. Is this the same Twilight book as before? Maybe another year. <laughs> am I... What am I seeing up here? What is that? I can't do anything here. Oh, I can place the book on the shelf. I can't do it with this. Okay. Okay, bye children. Oh, I can talk to Lily. Maybe she has some insight into the Johnny situation. <laughs> Are you gonna settle down somewhere? I really should have watched those two last night. They were up late. Well, it's not an everyday circumstance. True. Also, parents have so much shame, blame, and guilt for everything. <laughs> My first thought was existing, but it's not what I meant. Just like everything inherently that comes with parenting. There's so much like, so much of this idea that because it's not perfect, it's not good enough. I suppose. Oh, was there something you wanted to ask? Oh. We don't have very many choices in this game, do we? This is a lot of choices. The future, that's... Just tell me everything about the future. That'd be great. Tommy and Sarah, Lily, tell me about the future. This is your full-time job, isn't it? What will you do when this is over? What else is there to do? Find a job in the city and live on, I suppose. It's a shame, though. I'm going to miss Johnny in this place. I bet. It's a very unique place. Maybe I'll come back and visit every once in a while. Would the new owners let you? I'm assuming there would be new owners, depending on what the estate says. Tommy and Sarah. So what are you going to tell them about John? Huh. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'll probably make something up, but it's no use. Kids are smart nowadays. They'll figure it out. That is such a hard choice. How do you tell children about death? <laughs> There's a certain point, certain age, where kids, like, don't really comprehend death and, like, what it means and its finality. Like, they, they kind of, like, get the words, I guess. But they don't quite get the words. Like, they don't, they don't know what it means. It's because it's such a vague concept and kids think so concretely. It's so very black and white. It's just, like, how their brains work at, at, very, at certain ages. And, and death is not that way. It's so vague. And so this, as parents then, we, we sit there thinking about like, okay, what age do we tell them, first of all? Like, 
this animal, uh, you know, when we're speaking of things that are a little more broad than this game, like this animal has passed away or this person has passed away. We have to sit there and think, first of all, at what age do we actually tell them that that's what happened? Um, but then there's this thing of like, do they actually understand what we're talking about? Just because they seem like they understand doesn't mean they always understand. And that's why we have all these kind of analogies of like, you know, we brought the dog to the farm, like these kinds of, sometimes they feel like memes, but that's why those things exist because sometimes it feels like we can't tell kids those things because of their age. Might as well, it's the nature of life, there's nothing to hide. About Lily. You know, it's pretty unusual for someone like you to work here. I actually would think that whatever company Rosalind and Neil work for, I'm surprised they don't have, like, caretakers working, like, with their company. Almost just, like, hospice. Like, hospice... Hospice is essentially uh, a service that companies offer where <sighs> hospice is basically acknowledging that someone is passing away. Someone is going to die. We don't usually talk about hospice if someone is not dying which is why kind of the host like the concept of hospice or the the service of hospice by itself is sometimes an emotional thing for families to like decide that they're going to do or things like that because at a certain point if we're talking about hospice we're admitting that that person is going to pass away relatively soon but hospice includes a, a bunch of other services underneath the umbrella of the concept of, of hospice or or if, if a company is off, offering hospice services, they're offering a lot of things underneath that umbrella of what that means. That could be like therapy type services, uh, therapy groups. It could be just like case, general case management things. I'm talking about like those are like the therapy type things. Um, but there's also, there's a, a ton of nursing things and like caregivery type things. And it all depends on like what that person may need. So in the very beginning of working with a hospice company, I don't know if that's the, the most appropriate word, it might be that they come once a week. And then as things start to decline, get worse, they come more often because that's kind of what, what that person needs. But uh, a lot of hospice companies also kind of look at it like it's not just about that one person it's also their family and like what does their family need and how can we support everybody and some hospice companies offer like uh, grief and loss groups for the entire community too so i guess all of that to say this idea that sometimes when companies offer something that is about this idea of of death or loss they offer more than one type of service I guess is where I'm coming from when I say that. So I would not be surprised if whatever company these doctors work for, like, why, why wouldn't they also work with caregivers, right? It would seem like an easy way to kind of know when their service is needed. Didn't Neil make that comment earlier where it's like, you don't always know when we're needed? It was some comment like that. That that just seems like it would be an easy connection. Networking, like the, that kind of stuff. I don't know. That's just my thought. The two children and all, I mean. I mean, how many kids we have or what our family looks like doesn't necessarily determine our job, though. It's not that bad, really. There's a school bus that passes through here. All the way up to a lighthouse? But how did you even end up here? Like, Johnny asked her to? Well, a few years ago, my husband passed away. Oh, so, like, Lily and Johnny bonded through their mutual loss? Because Johnny had River who passed away, and she had her husband who passed away. What happened? This this makes me wonder, uh, going through the memories, I thought that Anya, the lighthouse, I because of how River and Johnny talked about Anya, I assumed that it was a kid. Like, they had a kid that had passed away, something like that. They didn't talk in the memories about if they had wanted children. And I wonder if they did. So if they did want kids and they just never had kids, I'm assuming that, I guess. Um, <laughs> granted, these are characters in a video game, but whatever. I wonder if Johnny would have welcomed kids in his home because maybe he, like, maybe he wanted kids and he just never had kids. He was in the army. Oh, they were the last batch to be deployed overseas. Well, that... Oh. That's a lot right there, right? Sorry to hear. 
I panicked. Our savings were low and the job job market was grim. That's really hard too, especially if, if you haven't. Sometimes you have these situations where like that wasn't your job in the family to like bring money into the family. And then it's like, how do you handle that when suddenly that is your job? <laughs> There's a lot of emotions that go into situations like that for families. Johnny saw my ad and offered me the job. I accepted with gratitude. This place is peaceful, too. It helped me with my grieving. Well, and it worked out for both of them because she had a place to live now, too. Like, financially, I guess. It seemed like it would work out for her. Doesn't the government issue grants to war widows to help them get, get back on their feet? The cynical part of me sits there and says that would, that would assume that the, like, VA or, or whatever government entity we're talking about here would, like file their paperwork in a timely fashion though they do and eventually <laughs> eventually yeah i received aid but by then johnny was starting to have trouble on his own he needed my help oh, so she helped johnny they did have a connection like she really did care for him tommy and sarah liked this place too and so we stayed as for johnny he was glad as well we're going to miss him. I think deep down, he really wanted a family. No more questions. Kind of asked a lot. I was a stranger, just like going into your home, asking a lot of personal questions. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Before Johnny fell unconscious, he told me that you two would probably be coming soon. Yeah, because he called. He like initiated the service right he said that he probably wouldn't get the chance himself but he wanted me to tell you thanks for him so thank you that's sweet stuff like this is always so sad you know, you get to learn about these people and people's lives. And, like, what was meaningful to them? I see that as I'm in the bathroom, just, like, plopping around in the sink going, what's here? <laughs> you know, really, really deep, insightful conversations are happening in that bathroom. The lights are off. Because there were chests here that we couldn't get into either. I'm poking around, like... Magically, there's something new that has appeared. Because hmm. I think this was locked? Yeah, and maybe this, but I can't remember. Oh, the cabinet's filled with unused fine china. Okay. And I'm assuming there's nothing different in this room. That had all the um, rabbits in it. The light's off. I can hear is still fucking unsettling. What is, what is this? Oh, broken music box. Hmm. Nothing else. Rabbit folded out of paper. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave because I don't like the music in there. The lack of music. Don't like it. <laughs> The music in this section is also very somber. We've spent all this time going through Johnny's memories. Oh! Hi. We spent all this time going through Johnny's memories. And, like, this is a person that we know is going to die soon. And, like, the more we go through his memories, the more we get to know him. And... There's this attachment that gets formed the more time we essentially spend with Johnny. So even though we didn't know Johnny during those times, like when they really happened, we're still getting to know him and it's easy to form an attachment that way. So in, in like real life, outside of the memories, it's incredibly sad that knowing that he's going to pass away, even though Johnny doesn't know us. Hmm. What is it? It seems like our little Johnny here has some hidden records from the old days. 
go on. Hidden records. Hidden medical records, to be exact. Would those be his or River's? Because River had more of the medical stuff from what we've seen from the memories. Thanks for the memories. Apparently, during his youth, he was administered a large dose of enhanced beta blockers. That is not incredibly surprising at all. Because beta blockers can be prescribed for anxiety. Um, shit. Google, help me out here. Oh, gosh, this is so much medical speak. Beta blockers can be used for high blood pressure. What does that sound? Look to the moon. I don't appreciate that sound when I'm trying to look at Google. Like, I know that that sound is not coming from, like, WebMD and the Mayo Clinic website. <laughs> Whew. Common reasons why doctors may prescribe beta blockers. Heart, heart failure. It cracks me up because it's like, well, if your heart's already failed, like, a heart failure, high blood pressure, angina. Don't know what that is. Abnormal heart rhythms, heart attacks, like a lot of heart stuff. Beta blockers can also treat glaucoma, migraine headaches, anxiety, um, certain types of tremors, hy hyperthyroidism. Did not know most of those. The reason I'm familiar with beta blockers is because um, they can be prescribed for anxiety. Um, that's, that's the only reason why I am familiar with the concept. Also, I'm obviously not a doctor. Um, so anything medical related at all anything prescription related please talk to doctors about i'm just familiar with this because like if my work overlaps with this stuff sometimes i'm familiar with it um but i've commented before on god drug names are something they're who remembers this stuff this is why i don't prescribe medications anyways um i had mentioned before that johnny seemed anxious like a lot of this what if thinking um a lot of questioning stuff a lot of assuming like the negative worst case scenarios so johnny seems like like he is having a hard time with anxiety so if johnny went to a doctor for anxiety i wouldn't be terribly surprised that he would be prescribed medication if that is what he wanted all of this is like if this is what johnny wanted um i cannot comment on like if beta blockers would be like the most reasonable medication that he would be prescribed because I'm not a doctor. Doctors are, uh, or medications are within the realm of like doctor stuff and not, not within the realm of like therapy stuff. Um, when Dr. Watts is sitting here talking about beta blockers though, I wonder if he's not assuming mental health. I wonder if he's assuming like Johnny has this like a secret heart issue. And I wonder if that could be important to the work that they're doing. What luck, they tend to have this little side effect on a curious thing called memories. Well, so can anxiety. Like, I have no idea if beta blockers can do that. There are a lot of side effects that medications can have. The likelihood of those side effects happening are usually very low. I think that's an important thing to keep in mind because a lot of times um, when we see the potential side effects that medications can have, our brains jump the negatives always stand out to us more than the positive. So if we ever hear that medication can have a side effect, we usually jump to the conclusion that that side effect is super likely, even though it's incredibly unlikely to happen to us. Especially because there's this aspect of medications where if, if there's a, like any side effect that can like ever have a possibility of ever happening, like legally, they, it has to be listed in association with those medications. But then we see that and we're like, oh my gosh, like this will happen to me because our brains are programmed to notice the negatives more than the positives. I think that's something to really recognize this idea that if we see a side effect, recognizing that we're probably going to jump to conclusions about what's going to happen to us. And I say that because is there a possibility that this medication could impact our memories? Potentially. But if this if this medication was prescribed for anxiety, <laughs> anxiety, which is like the actual cause of what I, of taking the medication in the first place, can also have an impact on our our memories as well. Like a lot of mental health things can. Beta blockers. Johnny didn't have a heart condition, did he? No, I don't think that Johnny did. I, I'm not a doctor, 
S still putting that disclaimer out there like big and loud, not a doctor. <laughs> what, what company is that? Fremulon? Where it's like, shh, not a doctor. Still not a doctor. Apparently not. Which leads one to wonder if these side effects were intended to be merely just that to begin with. So is he basically saying like chicken or the egg, right? Like, is it like the anxiety causing the memory, memory issue, memory loss that blocked off the childhood or whether it's the medication that did that chicken or the egg. And in such a large amount, large amount of memory loss or large amount of beta blockers, its impact on his memories. Oh, large amount of memory loss. Its impact on his memories at the time of administration must have been significant. Hmm, where are you? You don't just like take, you just like take a medication and then like poof, your memories are gone. That's not how it works. You think that's what kept us out of his earliest memories? I don't think so. Well, it's not the machine, I'll tell you that. The maintenance department yelled at me for scolding them. <laughs> it's like, oh, woe is me. <laughs> so what now? I was just given the reconfiguration frequencies that should get us past the blockers. So they're trying to get past the medication's impact, but what if it's not the medication? Again, chicken or the egg, right? Once we're in his childhood, it might finally be early enough to transfer his desire for it to work. Then what are we waiting for? Just one thing. Of course, there's always that one thing. In order to activate the new frequencies, we'll need a trigger. Hmm. A trigger is like a very common mental health term that sometimes I forget people aren't familiar with. So, <laughs> quick one-on-one -on -one course on triggers. Um, I think the easiest way to think of a trigger is like a a cause like it's a cause to an effect people talk about triggers a lot as though it's like um like this was triggering for me or this triggered me in some way as in like some emotional response or some response that happened usually that we can't see or sometimes that we can like if if anger gets triggered or someone's crying or, or that kind of thing would be an external thing that we could see um but usually that's kind of the conversation that we have where it's like this thing is triggering in some way um, and so basically it's like saying, what was the cause uh, to whatever it is that we're talking about? And I feel like sometimes that kind of stuff is important to talk about because if we've never really had that defined for us in some way, um, it can kind of be confusing to have the word kind of thrown at us. Something that is like strongly in the bridging inaccessible memory. So something that essentially is strong enough to have, to feel like it connects to the past. So it... It triggers those past memories to come up. <laughs> I had made a comment before that it was like trauma. Like trauma could have like created this this distance, could have cut off some of those past memories. So it, we're basically saying, let's trigger that trauma to come up. So we're going to cause that trauma to come up. Trigger The words cause and trigger can be synonymous in so many ways. And we'll need to give it to John for him to simulate, stimulate his memory internally. This is so, I feel like to me, like the weird part about this is like, Johnny can't like consent to this because he's not like conscious. Like, yes, at some point he consented and he signed paper, but did he actually know what he was consenting to? Because if not, how was there consent? But what do we know of? We've only gotten a glimpse of his childhood memories. And even if we find a childhood photo or something, John's unconscious. Yeah, back to square one. I mean, smell is usually an incredibly powerful memory connection thing. I believe that smell is supposed to be, of all of our senses, smell is supposed to be the one that brings back memories the most or the strongest or the fastest, something like that. Um, so this idea of if we brought in something that had a strong smell connection to Johnny's past, so like... A jar of pickled olives. Granted, that isn't just connected to Johnny's childhood. I'm assuming that that would go back to childhood. It's been everywhere. <laughs> um, 
But because that memory has also been everywhere, would that smell bring up? Because that's a smell. I'm assuming that's a smell. I'm thinking of like the type of olives you put in like <laughs> martinis again. But that memory, that may not trigger a memory from childhood. That may trigger like the wedding memory or all these other times when we've... <laughs> The one where we were drinking with them in the bar. I'm assuming that's what that is. I am assuming that the olives are like representing alcohol. I've never seen someone just drink cans, jars of olives. Anyways, that isn't the only time in Johnny's life when that's been present. So it may actually just trigger those memories that we've already seen. That's my thought. So we're not exactly back to square one. We know enough to make some type of educated guess. There could be something in the mom's kitchen memory that we could, like, guess with, right? Like, what was mom cooking? Could we could we kind of guess from that, make an educated guess? You know, this job hasn't been such a pain in the arse for me since Nora's case last year. Likewise... So that's important. Why bring it up unless it's important? This is killing me. I'm going out to get some fresh air. Jeez. <laughs> Forgot my coffee. Okay, bye, Neil. <laughs> Received note, beta blocker. So, notes, oof. Johnny. <laughs> Sad rabbit. Um, so many notes. Drug with the side effect of dampening memories by interfering with stress hormones. Hmm. Items. Oh, we still have a platypus. Key to the basement door. Everybody likes keys. <laughs> okay. Hmm. The last paper rabbit River gave to John. I wonder if there's anything written on that paper. Oh, we can see Neil go outside. Jeez! Neil! <laughs> it smells! <sighs> Fantastic! I don't know what to tell you. Quit barging in and out of doors! <laughs> the roadkill, Ava. It smells. Well, <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Neil. I love how Neil will figure out, like, N Neil will, like, dig around in stuff to find medical records and then extrapolate from that, like, this medical record means this thing and this thing means this thing, like, very much like Sherlockian, right? Well, not exactly, but you get what I mean. And then comes in saying something completely obvious, like, the roadkill smells. <laughs> Tell me more about this. Tell me more! Because I don't feel like I need to explain how, like, like what happens to dead things. I don't think I need to tell you that that's not a great smell. <laughs> Just, like, like, the difference between, like... <laughs> Like, piecing all these pieces together about the beta blockers, and then, like, oh, the roadkill smells. Okay. <laughs> She's coming over, like, oh, I know, it's your fault for running over it. What's what's going on? The children are still sleeping. Keep it down, Neil. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you very politely to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait a minute. That last memory, the one we were stuck at. I don't remember what that was. It was the same smell. Was it? Was there a smell? I don't remember what it was. What are you two talking about? The old... Again, it goes back to like these big, these big brain things. The olfactory receptors are directly linked to the brain's limbic system, Lily. I like how he says that, like, of course, this explains everything. Don't you see what this means? Okay, so I guess that goes back to what I said earlier. Like, smell is, like, the the fastest uh, 
fastest. I don't know if that's the case, but like the of, of all of our senses, smell is the most likely to trigger memories. Let's go with that. And so if the last memory that we were at had a strong smell that smells like roadkill, then ugh, you bring the roadkill in. Let's bring in the smell of death. And then um, that will trigger that last memory to like open, essentially. Um, I don't remember what the last memory was. I remember like the road type thing opening up. It's been a couple of days since I've played. Um, so like that makes sense to me, but then there's this horrible thought of what on earth would have been present in Johnny's childhood that would smell like roadkill that's been there for a whole day. Cause the smell of death is extremely unpleasant. Um, you don't forget the smell of death if you've ever smelled it. Um, and that, whatever that is, that could be very traumatic. No wonder there's that kind of separation that happened in those memories. Don't you see what this means? I'm, what? <laughs> it means that smell is arguably the most effective sense for memory recall, that's what I said. We can use it as a stimulant to bridge the childhood memories. And the best part, even though Johnny's unconscious, he's still susceptible. Again, that, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a lab rat, like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm missing some vital uh, contextual inf info on this whole thing. That's fair. All right, this is good. This is awesome. <laughs> Neil, you're a little too excited about this. Now, you just need to go fetch the piece, uh, a piece of the roadkill. Whoa, 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 Neil. Don't, don't put this on someone else. I think you could get it. Yes, I'll just... <laughs> Wait, why should I fetch it? Exactly. You're the one who ran over it. That's fair. Exactly. I've already done my part. I supplied it. <laughs> oh, you miserable bastard. <laughs> um, If it helps any, I... Oh, Lily, please don't volunteer for that. I have a... Oh. It's, it's the whole, like, I'm not volunteering, but, like, I have a pair of gloves you can use. <laughs> oh, you'd have to do that whole walk from the road to the house carrying it. Oh, there aren't really, they aren't really disposable gloves, but that'll probably change after this. That's fair. Where do I go for the gloves? Just make sure the gloves don't get anywhere near this house afterwards. Roadkill will have to come in, though. Ew, yeah, it's gonna make the whole house smell. Oh god, you're gonna have to like Febreze fucking everything. So, do I just go? Oh, this is gonna be a long walk of shame. Where am I going again? Besides the road, I guess. Oh, are you wearing the gloves? Is that the blue stuff on your hands? Oh boy. Oh, no, we gotta go this way. Where else? Whoa. <laughs> Little squirrel buddies passed, huh? Deja vu. <sighs> Squirrels are like, not our friend. Don't take our friend. <laughs> oh, this would be an awful walk. Oh. <sighs> an actual hand, too, that you put over the squirrel. <sighs> the kind of things this job gets me into. It's not safe to just bring... Oh, how long has it been sitting there? A day? A whole day? Because it was... We, we, we worked overnight. It's not safe to just... Oh, it's been sitting in the sun? Oh. It is not safe to just bring in a piece of germ-infested roadkill like this. There's a valued container in the car it at least make this odor control a rule okay so we get a container first like a, a glass thing that scientists use oh good we don't have to like do the whole walk again what? where are you going i 
I go take a leak? There's a bathroom. Just to the left. Do you don't I mean you can go outside, but you don't have to. I don't think he's going to the bathroom. What a mess. The crash shook up everything. Let's see. Ah, here it is. Val oh, valved, not valued, valved container. English is hard. Now, to get some of that dirty roadkill. <gasps> what came out of the car? What is this? This, this is... Painkillers. Are those Neil's? And that's why Neil zoomed out of the car. Valve container description? Nothing. We don't have them in our items. Do we? We don't have it in our notes. <laughs> we have a note on Dr. Neil Watts. Description? A pretty cool guy. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. We don't have the painkillers in here, but also like what kind of painkillers? Uh. Received contained roadkill odor. Also, I guess I realized if those Painkillers were like prescribed. Wouldn't they have Neil's name on them? Okay. Also, how can Neil zoom? Like, Neil zooms and we don't zoom. That feels a little unfair. I want to be able to zoom. I still want to do something with this tree. Hmm. Maybe I could have done something with that tree if I had been um, Rosalind the first, like when you first can choose, like which person. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, hey. Did you get the roadkill? And the painkillers is ready. <laughs> Great. Go set it up. I'll be right back. Neil. Oh, did it have his name on it? These painkillers. <laughs> I think they're yours. It's kind of like two people in the car. I know it's not mine. <laughs> Must be yours. <laughs> hey! <laughs> uh, may I ask why you're on them? I'm very curious. Like, the game has enough accuracy, real life -edness, to say, like, beta blockers. So then I'm curious what like uh type of painkillers we're talking about for neil then because like again it they didn't just say like heart medication or anxiety medication when it came to johnny so then like but right here they're being very vague may i ask why you're on them i wasn't going to tell you but Oh, this is embarrassing. A few days ago, I walked into a concrete wall. I don't... I don't believe that. This is, like, from what we've seen of Neil. Neil's very sarcastic, very flippant sometimes. And, like, for example, perfect example. Neil just told Lily, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and walked outside the house. Obviously, he's not going to the bathroom. And I also say this because I am a very clumsy person. Very clumsy person. I don't even know how many walls I have walked into. Not concrete. But that doesn't make a difference. Like, I, I say that because the speed that I would be walking at impacts the amount of herdedness that I... Like, I'm not a mathematician. But, like, somewhere... There has to be a formula out there. Some mathematician has to have a formula out there for how hurt we get when we walk into a concrete wall. And I'm sure that one of those 
letters that goes into a formula like that it has to be the speed at which we are walking. Not the material that we walk into. So just because I have not personally walked into a concrete wall does not mean <laughs> that that I, I can't talk from experience on this. <laughs> like, to, to have... To have, like, prescription-type painkillers, you'd have to be, like, flung at great speeds into a concrete wall kind of thing, like car crash level stuff. You don't just walk into a concrete wall and get prescription-level painkillers. I'm assuming prescription-level painkillers and not, like, acetaminophen. Acet acetam- yes, the, at, like, Tylenol, ibuprofen, right? Like, that's not what we're talking about here. Otherwise, why would this be a, such a conversation? You don't hand someone their Tylenol and say, like, why are you on this? Because that's, like, a normal thing, I guess, to, to take for, like, normal things like headaches, right? You just walked into a wall like that. Okay, now I'm feeling judged, Rosalind, because, like, <laughs> can I've walked into walls before. <laughs> what can I say? I was in deep thought. <laughs> You know how deeply I think. <laughs> Again, but this, it's about the speed. It's not about how deep you think. I don't think that's one of those little things in that algebraic formula. That's not one of those things. How fast you were going, I'm pretty sure that's in there. These are some rather strong pills, Neil. So not Tylenol, not ibuprofen. Prescription level strength is what we're talking about. And it was a rather strong concrete wall. I feel like this is some avoidance, right? Like, we're not we're not having this conversation, really. <sighs> Twas a match made in heaven, I say. <sighs> Anyways, you got the roadkill, right? I guess the reason why I'm curious, like, what types of medications are we talking about here? And the reason why I imagine Rosalind wants to know is because with a lot of prescription painkillers, there's this chance of addiction that kind of comes with it. And so I imagine a lot of these questions come from a place of concern of like, first off, like what happened? Cause obviously she has no idea that something like serious happened, like serious enough to be on these medications. She has no idea, but also the idea that sometimes we get on these, these painkillers and then we, we become, we get into a place of addiction. We have a hard time getting off of these painkillers. Um, and that is a very real thing that, that people experience with chronic pain. It doesn't, we don't have to walk into a concrete wall. Sometimes our body just, for some dark humor, decides it hates us and we get chronic pain, you know, fibromyalgia, there are a bunch of different things that can happen. And we have this type of chronic pain where we, um, get on these medications, but, but they're addictive. And then we have a hard time with that. These are very real things that can happen. Let's hurry. John's dying back there. It's almost like, <clears throat> because someone is dying, we can't continue this conversation about me. Let me deflect off of me to talk about something else. That feels like actually a lot of uh, this character's humor is that kind of like deflecting humor or dark humor or just like anything humor related. Neil? <laughs> You aren't addicted, are you? This idea of like, please reassure me that everything's fine. Like almost this idea of, <clears throat> I feel like this question is a bit like, please, like I, I respect that if you don't want to talk about some of this, but at least reassure me that I don't have to worry about addiction. I feel like that's how this question or what this question is. Are you kidding me? So Rosalind's like, just tell me you're not addicted. And um, Neil's response is, I'd overdose before I'd sink to that level of contrived mess. That, how is that reassuring? I don't think it's made to be reassuring, to be fair. I think this is more of Neil's very dark humor. I feel like the amount of dark humor that is like usually considered acceptable is like here. And Neil's like, oh, here. Well, I'm gonna take it here. Neil. Also, like, they're using potentially experimental equipment and, like, if you're on certain levels of medications, would that be a good idea with whatever equipment they're using? 
This is the very logical side of me when I'm talking about a video game with equipment that doesn't exist in reality. So, when we get to that exact point, I will send the signal. The bat signal. When I do, I want you to release the valve for about three seconds. You're all going to smell death for three seconds, and it's probably going to linger a bit after that. Certainly. <laughs> like, I'm going to give it to the doctor. Where it's like, you... As a doctor, probably know what we're, what we're, what we're getting into here. <clears throat> Brace yourself for that. Cool. This is gonna go fantastic. About time you showed up. Have you made sure the germs are sealed off? Fully sealed and filtered. Not like it matter to a dead man. You should know that Johnny's condition is deteriorating fast. Also, like, Johnny looks like he has a football on his head, and it makes me think of Hey Arnold. This might be your last chance, you two. Bre no pressure! <clears throat> Whatever you're doing there, good luck! In my head, I was thinking that Neil would, of course, make, make a joke about, we don't need luck, but then I couldn't think of an end to that sentence. So I didn't say it out loud, but then, of course, Neil's like, Lux, Luck's the last thing we need. Oh, see, now they're all Hey Arnold. Or Stewie. I mean, pick your football-headed cartoon character. Act 3. They shine their lights at the other lighthouses and at me. Is that a, is that a book quote? Childhood memories. Let's go. Okay, so this is where we were before. Nothing. We don't care about bedrooms. The clock is ticking. We have Johnny, we have the soccer ball. Because this is the one thing that we got. <clears throat> to think that this little thing's causing us so much trouble. I just want to kick it to outer space. I mean, Drowning does want to go to the moon. I suppose all we can do now is send this signal and hope. But we're not... Oh, the signal to, to do the thing. Oh, okay. I was like, we already tried that. Well, ready? The bad signal! Something's happening. Quick, send it again! What's going on? Oh. Doctor, something's wrong. Johnny's in the red. What? Take over for me, Lily. His condition has been destabilized. Intake levels must be reconfigured. It's almost like forcing something that Johnny wasn't ready for wasn't a good idea. It's happening to this place. It's been destabilized. Get out. What? Get out of his memory. Now. Why not you, too? What are you talking about? If the system doesn't restabilize soon, the shock might permanently damage whoever's in here. You've got to be... Why are you... Well, yeah, why are you getting out then? I can't, Neil. If both of us get out under this state, all our work will be reset. There won't be enough time to redo all we've done before Johnny... So, like, she's sacrificing herself, potentially? Oh, you freaking... Don't pull that contrived crap on me. This ain't a movie, and you're no hero. You're just being a moron. Then why are you being one, too? Get the hell out of here. Screw that. If you're gone, they'll probably pair me up with Alistair. Like, from Dragon Age? Do you know how badly he smells? <laughs> like he's in Dragon Age? <laughs> Worse than the roadkill! Don't tell the fans of Alistair that. Um, 
Damn it, Neil. This is what I get for helping you cheat through the entrance exams. Wow. You better hope that there's a good doctor on the outside. <laughs> Even then, there's only so much you can do. Doctor? I think we're okay. For now. I would assume that they wouldn't just, like, kill off those characters. Yes. Into childhood. Did you finish just arguing back and forth? And guess what? Your carrot cake sucks. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Like, you can stop insulting me now. Yeah, and at the last Christmas party, you... Oh. I don't have to insult you anymore. Come on, let's go before that happens again. Um, you know that I didn't mean to, you know, call you a moron, right? <laughs> Jeez. You know, you know that I did, right? <laughs> so now we can go into all this drama stuff. I'm assuming that's what it is. That's what I'm going to keep calling it. But there's still a rift here. I can't, like, click past it. Oh? No, I can't. I don't see how this is any different than before. Do I have to do something with this soccer ball? Here goes nothing. Oh my gosh, I spent all that time looking for, for nothing. <sighs> Just teleport to the other soccer ball. Of course, why didn't I think of that before? Oh, we just like move it. It connected somehow. I don't know. Wow, I can't believe that worked. So we actually made it. Oh, little kiddo. But they're grayed out. But now I'm not sure if I'm going to like this place. What do you mean? It seems peaceful enough. Is it? Neo, did you know something odd in Johnny's room earlier? It's a bunk bed. What? There's something strange in there. Did you not see it? I suppose not. Wasn't it a bug bed? Never mind. I just hope I'm wrong. Johnny, Johnny's mom? Wow, that sounds fabulous. I know, right? You've got to take them there one day. Johnny's mom a lot. Someone doesn't get hit by a car, and that's why, like, the road kills, like, a trigger. Do they? Ugh, a kid, and a soccer ball, and the road. No. Time overla overlaps getting out of hand. Look at how many of him there are. It's like a zoo. If it was a bunk bed in the bedroom, is it not that there's a lot of them? Did he have a brother? Mm -hmm. Ha, huh, looks like the ball's moving around on its own and he's just chasing it. I wanna click on the ball. I can't click on the ball? Oh, okay. Oh, don't... Ah, uh, there's roadkill. Okay, but like, seriously, don't get hit. Nobody get hit by a car in the road. Stay, don't play in road. Okay, general rules. Don't play in roads. Like, play on sidewalks. Don't play rambunctiously on sidewalks when cars are going by. Don't do not do those things that are dangerous. Don't, don't do anything that's dangerous. How about that? Don't do anything that's dangerous. Deal? Deal. Okay. All thanks to this little fella's sacrifice. I hope. So, like, Rosalind has these suspicions, just like she did with River. Oh, no. Oh, jeez, look at the time. I better get going. The store closes early today. 
Oh, take care, Martha. Why does everybody have a mom named Martha in, like, stories, right? We have Batman, we have Superman, we have To the Moon. Say hello to the boys for me, boys. Plural. None of the other memories had a brother, did they? We heard about the grandfather, right? Where it's like, you were named- Like, you're nicknamed Joey, which doesn't make sense for John. You were nicknamed after your grandfather. Nothing about a brother. I will. I'll see you around. Maybe this is about all the trauma about why there's not a brother mentioned. Well, this is the end of the road. <laughs> and you were saying? Oh, is the brother going to get hit by a car? Oh, is the brother going to get hit by a car? Is that way? Like, there's... Oh, that would be awful. Never mind that. Maybe I was wrong after all. I mean, this place is so peaceful. It can't be so peaceful, though, if... If, like, it was so blocked off the way it was. The only thing that exists in this memory that could do such a thing would be trauma. Shit. Duh. We need to go back now. Wait, what's going on now? Just shut up and come. The music implies that something bad is going to happen. Oh, it's gonna be this. Don't play in the road, child. Oh, no, not ha not the actual mom. Oh, no. I don't understand. That shit is so traumatic. <sighs> if he was unconscious, how would he be seeing this here when we never when he never did? Well, maybe he did see it. Like was he in the car? Still, I'm just surprised that he survived. Did he? <laughs> We didn't hear about a brother. Actually, he didn't. What? Didn't you see it in his room, Neil? Johnny slept on a bunk bed. So it was a bunk bed that she saw. Joey. So... Joey may have been the name of their grandfather. But if it was their mom who actually ran over Joey. So like Johnny did see it, right? He was one of the kids that like we saw running around. And that's how we are able to see this memory. But because it was the mom who did it, if I'm understanding this correctly, not to shame, blame, or guilt the mom at all. It was it was obviously an accident, but like Maybe the way the mom's trauma is showing up is calling Johnny Joey. And that's why at the wedding, she called him Joey. And like, Johnny's friend is like, why is she calling you Joey? I didn't know about that. And Johnny was like, oh, it's just, just a nickname because like, that was our grandfather's name. He didn't mention anything about the brother. That could be the mom's trauma showing up. Joey, can you hear me? Oh, to see something like that as a kid. Joey. Why did you hit Joey, Mom? Why did you hit him? Oh, it was an accident. Joey, wake up, Joey. Wake up.
Joey. There's so much perfectionism as a parent, like so much pressure to like do it right and things like that. And then to, to be the one driving the car when that happens. I feel like that's an extra layer of trauma on top of that. Even though they were young, to lose a twin brother, not to mention how their mother must feel. Well, and to see it happen too, like for, for from Johnny's perspective, is not just losing the brother, but like to see it too. <laughs> At least Johnny had the beta blockers to ease his memories or erase his memories, but like the trauma is still there. Again, if we just had a pill that we could pop that would just like make these these past things go away, like <laughs> that's not how it works. Not like he remembers it much. Fuzzily unlinked, not erased. Somewhere in there, the aftermath of those memories probably lingered. And still impacted him. That's probably a better way to put it. It's like, if these memories are, like, if we have something that makes it so these memories, like, aren't something that we can easily access, it doesn't mean that they're not there. They're still there. They still impact us. What about their mother? I don't think she took the beta blockers. She seems to have gone a little cuckoo. I mean, I wouldn't phrase it that way. I think that she has that trauma that impacts her. At least, I don't really think she called Johnny Joey's a nickname. Yeah. Like, she misses him and, like, can't accept that he's gone and how it happened and what happened. <sighs> Hasn't really processed that trauma. But if she then takes Johnny for Joey, what about Johnny himself? Yeah, how do you process that? Especially if you can't easily access those memories. I don't like it here. Let's move on. Well, but we need the memory things. Receive note, Joey. Seems like this wasn't the only memory unlinked. Well, because it doesn't have anything to do with the moon. So then... Going to the moon, where is that linked to? Like, where does that come from? Odd, it's not putting up a barrier anymore. Don't jinx it. Like, is going to the moon something that has to do with Joey? Yeah. Did Joey want to go to the moon? And that's why when we asked Johnny about it, Johnny was like, I want to go to the moon, what are you talking about? Dude, you should totally give this series a try. <laughs> I mean... Really, it's just wicked awesome. I've already plowed through three books straight. Is this Animorphs? Uh What's it called? Animorphs. It's about this group of kids turning into animals <laughs> to fight mind-controlling slugs. Is it about slugs? Oh. Meh. <laughs> I don't like that weird alien stuff. Why not? It's great. So, Johnny, Johnny kind of, Johnny kind of morphed, um, using some dark humor there, into Joey, because that's kind of like what his mom needed, um, because she wasn't processing through her own trauma, and she called him Joey. They, he had all the all of his brother's things still in his room. I imagine that the trauma would have... I, like, they didn't say, like, at what age he started taking the beta blockers. I don't imagine them prescribing beta blockers to a kid, but I don't know. Again, not a doctor. But I imagine that that trauma would have started, like, impacting his memories probably before he took the beta blockers. Um... So kind of filling that role potentially that his, his mom that he, maybe he felt like his mom needed and then once the memories were kind of disconnected then it just felt like that was his identity but maybe it didn't feel right and then maybe he didn't feel like he fit in with society maybe that kind of drew him to River but also then I wonder which part of him felt like 
like it was drawn to Rover. I wonder if it was the part that was Joey, the part that like is more outwardly seen almost. I'm not saying like literally split personalities or, or anything like anything like that, but almost like this idea of like the face we show the world versus the face we don't show the world. And, and it almost feels like Joey's like the face we show the world. But in this case, Johnny doesn't quite even know that that's what's happening, I think is the hard part. It feels like both the face you show the world, which is, I guess, Joey, and the face you don't show the world, which is, like, the real Johnny, that he never had a chance to fully explore. He never had a chance to fully flesh out the identity of who he really is, which is Johnny. Which makes it incredibly hard, then, to figure this out. So, when we talk about things like going up to River and talking to River and approaching River, is it because feeling this kinship about feeling like not belonging because of what he experienced when he was a child or was it because maybe like the part of him that is actually like Johnny and and not just conforming to what he felt like Joey would have done did that part of him like River and that was like different that this is it was it maybe it was this thing of like oh like this feels authentic to me like the one thing that feels authentic to me Joey, why not? It's great. Instead of going to boring school, they just turn to tigers and maul big bad aliens. They're all like, rawr, 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 rawr. And then they pick up lasers. <laughs> and it's all pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. Stop that. <laughs> just watch, Johnny. One day, I'm going to be a famous writer. I'll write the coolest novel on the block and every kid will get my book for free. I'll make us rich. Not if you give away your books for free. And buy both you and Ma really big houses. How would you get rich if you gave away the books for free? Free for the kids. Ah, the parents will still have to pay, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the parents will be thrilled to give you money. What? You're, you're still mad about the other day? What other day? Oh, come on. I called first dibs on the train, fair and square. Ah. What happened to your prize, anyway? I gave it away. Was it a platypus? To a hobo? Wow, Joey! Look, it's not just about that day. You know, Ma always favored you. Hey, that's not true. Remember last Christmas? And last Easter, and the time we went fishing, and... Okay, okay, you know what? You can have my train if you want. Really? Yep. I mean, hey, by your reasoning, she'll just give me another one, right? Shit. Listen, Johnny, what difference does it make who owns what? Everything that's mine is yours, too. It's rather altruistic for a kid. Usually kids are like, I want, I want, I want. I mean, we both get to play with it, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, come on. You're my twin brother, dude. You're like a part of me. <laughs> Oi! Let's go confuse the neighbors! <laughs> Wait, in the rain? Yes, in the rain, come on. Received no anamorphs. You can just automatically go through these memories now. Who? Anamorphs, Joey's favorite childhood books. Hmm. <sighs> Joey, deceased since childhood. This shit's sad. I don't think this is a good place to stop, but I have an appointment. So, we do have to stop here. This game is incredibly sad. I feel like this video is like a roller coaster of like things. <sighs> Because we found out about 
the beta blockers and this idea that like Johnny's been on some medication because like his anxiety was not only something that he experienced but like the anxiety was big enough that he was taking medication but also um that Neil is taking some painkillers some like I'm guessing prescription strength level painkillers and that was a kind of a, a difficult conversation that like didn't feel complete it wasn't all talked about it feels like something that will be revisited I don't know if that will be revisited in this game though because I know that there's a sequel I don't know if the sequel is an actual sequel sequels and like I don't know if they're the same characters um so I don't I don't quite know if that conversation will happen in this game or not. And then kind of the reveal that Johnny had a brother Joey and and all of that trauma around that. Just all incredibly sad. <sighs> we still don't know why he wants to go to the moon though. My assumption is that it's a wish that Joey wanted. But what brought it out? So, teenager? Teenager Johnny didn't want to go to the moon. So, teenager Johnny wasn't aware. Like, if this was a wish that Joey had, teenager Johnny wasn't aware of it. So, then there would have been something that would have had to have happened to adult Johnny to help, like, make him remember that that was a thing. That to me is the interesting part of it, like, timing. If if going to the moon was something that happened from childhood. But this is where I'm going to have to stop. I don't know how close I am to the end. It feels like we're close to the end. But I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts on the game and the video. And I'll see you next time.